I'm very much in favor of the activities of defense. So that was certainly uh, a motivation also to, uh, to uh, do this school. And at the same time, of course, uh, the topic is of interest and, 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 and it's nice to have the opportunity to get like colleagues and friends and, and researchers that you find interesting together here uh, and students that are uh, excellent students to, to interact and, and think about and discuss all kind of issues that have to do with one of the most complex systems that we command, which is language and communication, for which in recent times the neurobiological underpinnings and the possibility to study that have Im increased quite a bit. And that's also why it's so interesting to, at this time in, uh, in history, to, to discuss this with a number of uh, interesting uh, other uh, researchers and, and, uh, and good students. I was asked uh, by Peter whether I wanted to uh, like to participate in organizing this winter school. Yes, it did matter because it guaranteed a certain you know professional organization, outreach, um, also the ability to find you know and attract good students and make it also attractive for other researchers. So, but I think still the content is the main thing. Of course, you know that it's a unique opportunity to bring these two perspectives together: um, people studying um, communication in animals with people studying um, in, in humans, language and humans. Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess, of course, that uh, Yuri and myself, we discussed uh, the balance between, on the one hand, uh, let's say, taking the human language system uh, and, and its organization as a, as a starting point and look also what animal models of communication can, can tell us about how that system evolved in evolutionary time and, and what uh, and there, there are different possibilities. We can look at songbirds, we can look at uh, calls in, in uh, primate vocalization and so on. So there are all these kind of possibilities and also looking at possibilities to see genetic uh, similarities these days and so on, which were not possible, so easy to study like 20 years ago and so on. These possibilities these days are there and that's also why it's so interesting to now try to combine them. So we, we discussed among ourselves to find a balance and at the same time I think we realize how, how important informal interactions are, informal interactions between students themselves, because they, they will form a network that they meet each other later on at conferences, and also informal interactions with the, with the teachers. Um, we're very lucky that most of the people we invited to, to give a presentation are willing to stay here for mo almost the whole week. And that also gives lots of opportunities for students to interact with them and also uh, to interact among ourselves. Uh, and that and that I think is a, is a very nice format. So it is the the right kind of mix between, on the one hand, uh, like let's say lectures and and poster sessions at the same time, also possibilities for and time uh, for interactions at an informal level, even at the ski slopes or at dinners and, and overnight with a glass of wine or beer and so on. Yeah, and then we also wanted to give the students the opportunity to discuss stuff among themselves. So we actually assigned a task to them and. So now the idea is we put out these two theses and then we assign them to different groups. They didn't even have a choice, you know, in which group they would end up. And so now, now they either have to defend or attack that thesis. And so that's, you know, we're going to like take uh, the seat in the back row when they're developing this idea. We are there, we are available for consultation. But the really important thing is that, you know, after they have received most of the input already, they can take, you know, what they've heard, take these arguments and then synthesize them and, you know, come up with um, a perspective. And of course, the really smart people will now be able to take both perspectives so they can already anticipate what the other group might be saying, you know. And so I think it's a very, very nice way of getting them to develop their own uh, contribution, basically, to, to this um, winter school that we're having here. Well, I think, uh, I mean, the organ let's say Yuli and I were quite, quite quick in, this, in, in coming up with like a joint idea about how the, how, what the program should be. So that was not difficult. It was not like we had major discussions on what to do. Um, and, and of course, um, we also didn't have major discussions on who to invite. So that, that, that was fairly easy. Um, well, I think what, what for me at least is unique uh, at this uh, school in comparison to other schools that I've been to, all the meetings, is the fact that there are people here from the field of animal communication and animal systems and people that come from the field of the human language system and, and to see where the connections are and how they, how they can inform each other. And, and that, that uh, hasn't happened so much before uh, and that I think is a major, uh, major uh, like, uh, beneficial aspect of this particular school and also a unique feature.
Well, firstly, I should say it was great fun. I, I went to Nijmegen to meet with Peter and we sat down and it took us about, you know, 10 minutes to figure it all out. And we agreed immediately more or less on, you know, who we would like to invite. And then we were so lucky because most of the people that we, you know, were on top of the list agreed uh, to come and to be here for almost, as Peter said, the entire week. And um, the other thing is, I think the setting here is beautiful, so maybe that also helps, but also puts people in a mode where they feel, I think, appreciated, where they feel, um, yes, we care or fans cares to put people in an environment into a format where they can, you know, exchange their ideas when they can talk to uh, senior scientists and, and also go out and have fun and I think this break this combination between hard work you know and uh, lots of you know, intense lectures and then the poster sessions but also the play part you know being outside and going either for a walk or a snow walk or skiing or whatever is just puts people in a fantastic mode and uh, that helps certainly.